Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is 10th March and you know what that means. It's time to revise chapter 1 that is Python revision tour. I am excited to give you some tips and tricks to help you master the fundamentals. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Alright, let's get started. Chapter 1 covers the basics of Python. Focus on the core concepts and make sure you understand tokens, conditional statements and looping statements. Let's check out some of the fundamentals of Python because based on this concept you will be getting question in the form of true or false. The first concept is Python is a cross platform language. Yes, it can be run on Windows, Mac or Linux operating system. The second concept is variable declaration is implicit in Python. Yes, we need not mention the data type of the variable to declare it like other programming languages. Python decides the data type of the variable based on the value assigned to it. That's why the variable declaration is implicit. Let's move ahead to the third concept. Python supports an explicit conversion of an operand to a specific type. Yes, there is an arrangement to change the data type of the operand to a specific type. Here we are converting string to integer. Let's check out the last concept. Python does not allow same variable to hold different data literals or data types. Let me explain this concept with one example. We are going to initialize one variable i with 10. Now let's take the same variable and initialize some real value to it that is floating point number. In the third line I am going to initialize the same variable with one string. You can see here we are not getting any error. We are using same variable to store different data types literal. It is allowed because we don't define the data type of the variable explicitly. Python decides the data type of the variable based on the value assigned to it. That's why this statement is false. You will be using this concept to solve the questions in which you need to state true or false. The most important topic of this chapter is token. Here are the 5 tokens that we have studied in class 11 as well as in class 12. Out of these you will be focusing on the keyword identifier and operators. So let's check out the first token that is keyword. You know keywords are the special words which have some reserved meaning to the programming language. Here is the list of the keywords. Out of all these keywords, these three keywords are special. Why they are so special? Because the first alphabet is capital in case of true, false and none. You may get question in the exam that whether it is a valid identifier or not. And yes, it is a valid identifier because it is not a keyword anymore. We did not write first alphabet as capital. Same rule applies to these two keywords also. We will focus on one more keyword that is non-local. In the question where you need to find out the correct keyword, it will be written as non-local to test your knowledge. So the non-local keyword we are writing without any space or any underscore. I think there is no doubt related to other keywords. Just have a look at the list of the keywords then you can solve the question related to keywords. The second important token is identifier. Surely you will get one question based on it where you need to find out the valid or invalid identifier. For that you should be clear with the rules for designing an identifier. What's the first rule? The variable name should not be a keyword. Just now we saw the list of the keywords so keep in mind all the keywords. The second rule is variable name must be designed with letters, numbers or underscore. Underscore is allowed as a first character also but number is not allowed as a first character that is also one of the important rule. You cannot design any variable like this in which the variable is getting started with a number. Here is one more important rule that special symbols are not allowed. Except underscore, you cannot use any other special symbols like star, question mark and dash. So fix this rule in mind and get this one mark. The third and the most important token is operators. Operators will be used throughout the programming portion. So let's look at the categories of the operator. They are categorized into two types, unary and binary. Unary operator operates on only one operand. Here are the sum of the examples of unary operator. 
प्लस एंड माइनस आर बोथ यूनरी एज वेल एज बायनरी ऑपरेटर बट नॉट इज ओनली अ यूनरी ऑपरेटर इफ वी राइट नॉट ऑफ ट्रू इट विल बी फॉल्स इट विल निगेट द वैल्यू सो इट ऑपरेट्स ओनली ऑन वन ऑपरेट सिमिलरली प्लस एंड माइनस वी कैन राइट एज दिस प्लस टेन और माइनस फाइव वेर एज द सेकेंड कैटेगरी इज बाइनरी ऑपरेटर्स इट ऑपरेट्स ऑन टू ऑपरेंट्स ऑपरेंट्स मीन्स इट कैन बी अ कॉन्स्टंट और वेरिएबल आउट ऑफ दिस वी नीड टू फोकस ऑन रिलेशनल ऑपरेटर्स अरिथमेटिक ऑपरेटर्स लॉजिकल ऑपरेटर्स एज वेल एज मेंबरशिप ऑपरेटर्स मोर इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल बी गेटिंग क्वेश्चन फॉर वन मार्क्स इन विच वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट द वैलिड अरिथमेटिक रिलेशनल और लॉजिकल ऑपरेटर्स टू मेक श्योर राइट द लिस्ट ऑफ द ऑपरेटर्स इयर अरिथमेटिक ऑपरेटर्स आर प्लस माइनस मल्टीप्लिकेशन डिविजन मॉड्यूलस एंड एक्सपोनशिएशन ऑपरेटर देर इज वन मोर अरिथमेटिक ऑपरेटर दैट इज फ्लोर डिविजन You are well familiar with the relational operators. There are six relational operators: less than, less than equals to, greater than, greater than equals to, equals to, and not equals to. Now let's talk about the logical operators. There are three logical operators: and, or, and the third one is not. Apart from these three operators, we will be concentrating on membership operators also because we will be using it in the looping statements. There are two membership operators in and not in. Out of that, in operator is important. I think concentrating on these four operators will be sufficient for this chapter. I think no need to discuss more about assignment operator. This assignment operator will be using more. Sometimes we can use this arithmetic assignment operator also. Let me clear you in short what is the use of this arithmetic assignment operator. Let's consider one example. We need to increment the previous value of x by one. So this statement we can rewrite using this shorthand assignment operator, or we can call it as a arithmetic assignment operator. It looks like this: x plus equals to one. When we study this topic operator, to know operator precedence is very important. In the exam, you will surely get one question where you need to evaluate the expression. That time, you should have the knowledge of the precedence of the operators, because on the basis of precedence, the operators get evaluated. Here is the table where we have written the operators from the highest to lowest precedence. You are already familiar with the maths Bodmas rule. Same applies here. So, among all the operators, parentheses is having the highest precedence. to keep in mind the sequence of the precedence we will create one word for that the first is parenthesis so p is for parenthesis after parenthesis exponentiation operator has the higher precedence so we have written e for it the next important category in which we need to focus on is arithmetic operators let's write a for arithmetic operators in arithmetic operators also there are two levels of precedence in the first level we have these four operators and in the second level we have plus and minus in the precedence table the next category of operators is relational operator so let's write r for it moving ahead there are logical operators so let's write l for it out of these three logical operators not is having higher priority followed by and and at last or will get evaluated so let's remember this word pearl to know the operator precedence now we are clear with the precedence of the operators what if in the expression we have more than one operators with the same precedence that time we will follow the concept of associativity associativity means we will decide that operators will get evaluated from left to right or from right to left so all the operators will get operated from left to right but there is a exception only exponentiation operator operates from right to left if we have more than two exponentiation operator in the expression then it will get evaluated from right to left hope now you don't have any doubt regarding operators moving one step ahead now we have to concentrate on the conditional statements so there are four types of conditional statements out of this we will be focusing on these two if else and if elif 
Let's directly understand with one example with the hope that you know the syntax. We write if then condition with the colon we create block of statements. Condition will get evaluated as true or false. If it is true, it will come to this part. And if the condition is false, it will come to the else part. With this form of if we can write only one condition. But if we have more conditions, we can go ahead with this type of if. So with if we will be writing first condition, then we can continue the other conditions with elif. And finally, we will be getting else block. In this code, we are checking greater of two numbers. And with this code, we are finding out whether the number is positive, negative or zero. Be clear with the syntax of if statement because you may get questions where you need to find the errors in the given code. So proceeding further, this is very important that is looping statements. Out of these two loops, generally we use for loop. In the for loop, we will be using range function. I hope you are clear with the range function also. Here is the syntax. First, we mention the lower limit. By default, it is zero. The second parameter is upper limit, which is exclusive. And the final parameter is step value. Along with for, we use range function or we can use in operator to. When we use the concept of looping, if you want to come out of the loop in between, we will be using jump statement that is break. Generally, we write break statement with if. If the condition satisfies, then we will come out of the loop. We know break statement will terminate the immediate loop, not all the loops. Let's try to understand for loop how it works on the sequence. It works in the similar way with the list, tuple and string. So let me show you it on a string. Here is the first way of for loop in which we are using in operator. So look at the syntax for variable in sequence. Sequence can be list, tuple or string. To create block, we should not miss the colon and the statements in that body which we need to repeat. Let's consider one example. Here is a string with some value. Now let's iterate over this string for this is a variable in string 1. In the block, we are writing print statement. So the characters one by one will get printed. As it is iterating over each character one by one, so the characters are getting printed in the new line. If you want it in the same line, you can use the end parameter of the print statement. Now the same program we will be writing with the second type of for in which we are using range function. So here is the syntax for variable in range and the syntax of the range function you know. We will be mentioning start, stop and the third parameter is step. First parameter is optional and the third parameter is also optional. If you don't mention start, it will start from zero and you can skip this step part. By default, the step will be one. And the second parameter that is stop is exclusive. Now look at the code. The string is same. Now let's write for loop for i in range. In the range function, we are providing the length of the string one. And the length of the string means the number of characters in a string that is 10. So the loop will get executed in range of 10. We skip the start parameter. By default, it will start with zero. Here is the second parameter. Outer limit doesn't include. So it will be nine. The loop will get started from zero and it will continue up to nine. In this example, we iterate directly over characters of the string. But in this example, we are iterating over numbers. These are nothing but the indices of the string. So ultimately it is starting with the index zero and going up to index nine. Now look at the print statement. If we directly print i, we will be getting the numbers, but we don't want these numbers. We need the characters of the string. For that, we will be writing the string name and the index in the square bracket. Finally, here will be the output of this program. Hope you understood what we were trying to do here. Using for loop, we can iterate using index or using elements. The another type of loop is while loop. It is generally used to create infinite loop and we come out of the loop using break statement. 
maximum times we use this loop to create menus here is the format to write while loop the first step is initialization second step is to write condition and third step is to update that expression or condition same program we have modified using while loop r is initialized to 0 this is the initialization step that is first step with while we need to write the condition as we are starting with 0 i will go one less than the length of the string then we are printing it and here is the third step to update that expression we are incrementing it by 1 so the loop will continue from 0 to 9 and all the characters of this string will get printed so we are getting this output there are already two detailed videos on this chapter where we have covered all the concept in depth i would suggest going through it for better understanding so check out the playlist and go through these videos at the speed of 1.5x. Hey, that wraps up our discussion on the chapter 1. Thanks for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Best of luck with your computer science studies. Stay tuned for the next video where we will be tackling the crucial questions from chapter 1. Until then, stay confident. I will see you in the next video.